Hello everyone, my name is Brendan, along with my co-host Primo. This is the new podcast where we sit with all types of creators and talk about the maker journey. Welcome to Coffee with Creators. During today's episode, we are drinking the Bruce Lee Blend by the Bean Bastard Coffee Roastery in Buffalo, New York. With stone fruit, caramel, and kiwi notes, this coffee is sure to kick you up a notch. The maker vloggery thing you started, it's, it was a hashtag. I remember you said just to hashtag, hashtag maker vloggery. Um, what do you want to see in the maker vloggery uh, community and how do you want to see it grow um, mm-hmm. for average people that don't have huge businesses and stuff like that? And how, how do you think that a person can can get into this? And I, like I said before, I know you, you touched base on you don't have to have the best gear. You don't have to have the best camera and all this kind of good stuff. Um, just do it. Just get into it. So how, where do you want to see the maker vloggery movement go to? Well, <laughs> It's interesting that during my kind of evolution of, of trying to figure out the social media stuff and how I, it can actually help my business, I, I remember taking a lot of thought into wh- what is it that uh, captures my attention for other brands that I love. Like, what, I, I would try and pay attention that as I'm scrolling through, you know, the, the just endless Instagram feed throughout my day, what was the stuff that made me stop and like actually read something or, or double tap and. Um, what was the stuff that could actually capture my attention on YouTube for 10, 15 minutes at a time? And uh, that's the kind of stuff that I, I wanted to, to create that appeal for my audience. Um, as much as I hated the idea of putting my, my mug on in front of the camera. What's wrong um, with your was, mug? <laughs> All of our it's... mugs look the same, man. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> You know, it's funny, I, I'll go back to what I was saying, but it's really funny, Wit makes fun of me all the time because it's it, it, every time I get somebody who reaches out, especially like through the maker vloggery world, it seems to be uh, a, a big dude with the, with a beard and you know, somehow involved <laughs> with Leathercraft. Like we're all, we're all the same, man. We're all, we all cut from the same cloth. But um, yeah, it's, it, it is funny. I, I, uh, I remember thinking I want to create better engagement, more, more honest relationships with the, with the audience where they actually know what's going on. There's no, there's no smokes, you know, the smoke and mirror kind of thing happening. I, I, I used to believe in the fake it till you make it philosophy. I would kind of <laughs> pile up the orders a little bit higher than I could and say, wow, look how many orders are going out today. Or, you know, I would, uh, I would try and, you know, it's funny, it happens a lot in the world of business on Instagram, people will use the word we or our, you know, as if, as if trying to portray that it's this big thing happening when really it might just be one person. And, uh, I, I, that I've, was me. That I've was started me. saying, <laughs> <laughs> well, Hey Matt, I mean, it's, it's the thing is, is I, I felt a lot better about saying we, as I went on, because it's not just me, it's a big part. I mean, just having your wife support you in general right. and just being on board, even if she's not in the shop helping you ship or whatever, like, just having the family unit be supportive and be part of it really makes it a we for me because because that's it, it is more of a family thing happening here. It's not just a it's this isn't just a business to me. This is like our life as a family. Yeah, and so yeah. anyway, that's kind of how the the we came about for me. But um, I used to believe in that fake it till you make it philosophy and like really try and portray that we're something else. And I I remember getting some messages. Luckily, this kind of stopped, but I got some messages of people saying, "Hey, I would love to come out and see your factory and meet all your employees <laughs> and tour the, tour, you know, tour the the building." And I was like, I was like, "Oh, I mean, this was at the point where I was still like working out of my my living room, you know." And I was like, I was like, I really appreciate that, but um, you know, I hope I haven't misled you, but that's not exactly what we do. This we're is having a factory grown. shut down right now. They're on strike, and we're they, 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 it's just it's just not a good time right now. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably something I would have said at the time because I really wanted to push the, uh, you know, push the, this bigger, more successful image than we were. And and I, it wasn't until I moved away from that that I feel like we finally had a real honest connection with our, our audience. And so right. from then on, I just, you know, just decided full honesty, like this is where we're at. I mean, I don't, I don't exactly get into finances and like let people know, you know, the, the real nitty gritty details, but I love to like let people in on what's going on, like why something's out of stock why we decided to start pre-ordering this item instead of, um, 
you know, you know, anyway, there's, there's all kinds of things. I decided to like let people in on the decision and, and they seem to be a lot more understanding and appreciative of what's going on and they really invest their time into, you know, like when I say I couldn't put up a video on Friday because I was at the hospital, Wit's little sister was having a baby. Um, oh, man. That was a, I, I, I remember like I typed out a message at first. I was like, sorry guys, not gonna make it happen. And then I decided, I'm like, why, why wouldn't I just let them in on what's really going on? Um, right. I, I try to keep some things personal, but like this is something that really lets people invest in, in the idea of kind of being a part of this family and, and letting them in on this experience that we're having. And so, you know, I had so many people message back. They're like, hey, congrats on the new edition. And, you know, it's, it's just a cool, uh, it's just a much better relationship, I feel like, to have with your audience, a more honest one than, than to always be trying to put the smoke screen up and, and yeah. avoid questions and, and lie about things. And it's just, it's just a really uncomfortable position to be in when you're doing that. So anyway, to lead that into the maker vloggery stuff, um, YouTube, I remember I'd started doing some videos on YouTube. Okay, so to back up, I've actually always been a big fan of vlogging in general. Um, this kind of goes way back to like the world of uh, like family vloggers, like the Shaytards and even like, um, well, anyway, there, there's a lot of them out there, but I, yeah. I really used to get into that. I love the idea of documenting. I've always been a big fan of just like documenting an experience, both you visually You did an everyday and, thing for a while though, and that was, I mean, that, I was like, wow, that's crazy that you're doing that. That was, that was like <laughs> every day in your oh, house. Yeah. That yeah, was just crazy. It, it was tough. It was, I mean, I, I, I would keep doing it if it served the purpose of what I was trying to accomplish, but it really didn't. And I'll get into that more, but what, what I, what I love is just the idea of documenting an experience. And I always wanted to figure out how I could incorporate YouTube and video into our business. And I made a lot of jabs over the years. Um, I, I would put up a vlog, I'd be like, you know, Saturday in the shop. And I would try and show like wit working as much as I could. And I would like try and portray something. And again, I'm kind of going back to when I was like, I think I was really trying to pull the fake it till you make it thing. I was like trying too hard to portray what was happening without just actually documenting what was happening. And so right. anyway, I made a lot of jabs over the years and um, it, I still don't know if I've got it figured out, but I, I, I've, uh, I really enjoyed that interaction. And I think that people appreciate the more honest approach to like, like there's no way to hide that. And with an Instagram photo, you can throw filters on, you can, you can get a specific angle where you're, you know, not showing the mess outside of whatever you're taking a picture of. And right. you know, it's with video, like it is the way it is. Like people are seeing my Chinese food next to my project and I'm scarfing yeah. and I'm eating. And like, <laughs> it's, it, it yep. was a much more honest, like I, I think that it helped people really become a part of our story and, and um, feel like an honest connection. And so I uh, really started picking up momentum on that when I started doing the, daily vlogs um brandon I, you guys were both a big part of that and and uh you know really involved and participated a lot in the comments and our live streams and and um my problem with the mate with the daily vlogging was what i was trying to do was just just document what i was doing each day and um I, I think it got difficult because it left no room to get actual work done i felt like i was always trying to edit or you know um I wanted to make sure that there was leather craft somehow in the video. Yeah. And so I was finding myself trying to come up with projects, even if that day didn't necessitate any leather craft. A lot of times I'm just emailing and editing and, you know, working on the website and things like which that. Is, which is just riveting stuff to watch is somebody sitting at a computer. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I looked yeah. at something like that the other day. It was a guy who was vlogging his daily stuff and, and he, there was one point where he was cleaning snow off of his windshield and he made it look so good. Oh, Jesse Driftwood. <laughs> Jesse Driftwood. Driftwood, yeah. yeah and that... Dude, it looked, it looked so good, but I was just like, have you ever tried to scrape snow off of your windshield, especially <laughs> while trying to hold up a can? It's just like, yeah. it makes it everything 10 times more difficult. Oh so. yeah. I mean, yeah, some people, I mean, guys like him, they, they focus on, you know, the, with, the, with the vlogging, it's, it really is just about what they're doing throughout the day. But what I started finding is that people just wanted leather craft on my channel. And so right. I, I started feeling like, ah, oh, the daily vlog isn't working because I don't, especially now, I don't actually do leather every day. Now that we outsource our, our orders, um, right. th there's, there's, uh, our model has changed so much. Maybe back in the day when I was literally sitting in the machine 13 hours a day, I, I could have 
portrayed a little bit more Leathercraft, but I really felt like people want to see Leathercraft on this channel. So I moved to a, a once a week model where now we're just doing project videos every Friday and um, it's, it's a specific project. It, it's actually allowed me to like explore a little bit. I've tried projects that I don't normally do like holsters and you know, old Western rigs. Yeah, I saw um, that. Stuff that you wouldn't actually sell bags. on your website though, which is... Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I stopped doing a lot of custom stuff for a while too, and but I, I love the fact that you're maintaining a, a channel where you're showing people how to make stuff that they otherwise wouldn't really know how to make. It's, it's how I got started, being able to watch people um, on on Instagram or on YouTube and see how they were doing something and then reaching out to people like yeah. you. That's literally how I learned Leathercraft was just asking other people. So it's... Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's you know, and that's a that's a really good point. That that's a big part of why I wanted to be on YouTube was because YouTube played such a big part in how I learned Leathercraft. Right. Um, even though there wasn't much of it back then, I think Ian Atkinson from Laotis Leather was doing some stuff. Uh, Tandy had some videos on there that were kind of dated, and and um, you know, there, there were there were there was some stuff on there, but that's all I had to learn. That's it. Um, I'm not a big forum guy. I know a lot of guys spend time on forums and I've just never been able to really interact well on those. And so I, I'm just such a visual person. I love the visual interaction of video and, and uh, photo. So um, that's how I learned. And I remember thinking like, I just want to be able to, to provide that for somebody else. And so, um, yeah, I made a big change in our videos to go from more of a vlogging model to more of project based. Right. And, uh, Honestly, that's when the channel really started picking up and making big strides in growth. And uh, um, yeah, so as far as the maker vloggery goes, I keep kind of uh, um, leaving that. But I, I wanted to make a push for for uh, people to start including more video content in their craft because to me, it's just such a fascinating thing. It really wasn't meant to be like a hey, this is leather craft only. But it, it, unfortunately, just because I'm so connected in the leather craft world, it turned out to be like that. But we got guys like Brandon on there, yeah. you know, a um, lot of different types of makers as well, part of that Facebook group. And the, my whole goal was to help encourage people to be a little bit more open and transparent about your process. Um, I personally believe that it will help your business if that's what you're trying to do is mm -hmm. grow a business. Yep. Being more transparent and open and being more visually open and sharing what you're doing. Um, is only gonna help, just flat out. That's, it's, it's only gonna help your business and help your uh, engagement. So um, that was a big part of it. I just, and I, I really wanted the community aspect too. I think that's what it really came down to is I, I knew that there were a couple other people out there doing videos as makers. And I'm like, I wanna somehow like bring this together and, and uh, be able to interact with everybody, talk about like camera gear and you know, right. how, do you, how do you actually film yourself? You know, <laughs> when, you, when all you're doing is working in the shop, by yourself all day. It's really hard to to get like creative shots. And that was one of so, my biggest problems, man. I'll be honest mm -hmm. with you. When I first oh, started doing that too, tough. I was like, how do you? How does he set his camera somewhere in every single? Like it, it. Like I said, it ma it made me feel like every single task took twice as long just because I had to set up some yeah, sort of a camera it, angle. So it totally. And that's exactly why I don't do a video a day. If it weren't for that, I'd be I'd be pumping out at least three videos a week. But um, there's so much time that goes into the prep and filming and editing of a video that I mm -hmm. had to limit it to one week. And even then I'm pushing it. Like yep. I usually get started with prep on Tuesday and then I film it Wednesday and then I have to edit all Thursday. And if something comes up, like last Thursday, we were in the hospital, you know, things happen. Um, then I usually need Friday to edit most of the day and hopefully I can have it uploaded by Friday around five, but sometimes it doesn't happen. And so, I'm just always amazed that like it actually does take me almost an entire week to get a video up, but I want to change that because um, because the content's just so important and I, I want to produce more and I don't want to spend so much of my life editing and things like that, but sure. it's a really enjoyable thing and I truly believe that, I mean, it's helped our business significantly, mm -hmm. but I really believe that it could help anyone who who spends their day working with their hands and doing something that's just so visually appealing, I feel like it needs to be shared and portrayed, you yeah, know, especially definitely. if you're trying to grow a business around it. Absolutely, and do you feel like um, people need like really, really nice equipment to do that or what? Like, I mean, there's a lot of people that think that there's a wall in their way because yeah. they don't have the nice cameras like we're on or the nice cameras that you have for all your beautiful photography. And because they don't have those things, I can't do it, you know? 
Yeah, that was one of the things I heard the most as soon as I started like, I created the Facebook group, I started interacting with people more on these, you know, on this basis. And everyone was like, oh, I would love to do that, but you know, I can't afford a camera. And, and I, was, I, I was just like, like what? Please don't <laughs> let something like that stop you from, from having like really good engagement with your audience. I mean, right. that's the most important thing that you're doing on social media to grow your business. In this day and age, like most guys like us who are sitting in a workshop um, trying to create something with your hands and build a business around it. We don't have, you know, we're not going to trade shows. We're not going to um, uh, even like open market kind of stuff very often. Like for me, social media is all I have. It's what I put my, all my focus into. So creating like visually appealing imagery is one of the most important things you can do. And so the idea that you don't have like some nice camera is, is uh, it's really detrimental to people because Everybody, I mean, I don't want to say everyone, but most people, 90% of the world ha has a smartphone with a camera that shoots 4K, you know, video right. and 120 True. frames per second or more. You can shoot slow-mo. Um, you can buy gimbals for phones that are really cheap and get just mm -hmm. like amazing, you know, cinematic shots. And uh, anyway, there's really just no excuse because even if all you had was a flip phone with a camera on it that at least just did video, <laughs> You can, you can create content that's engaging for an audience. So uh, mm -hmm. I really wanted to pull away from that and try not to put so much focus on the gear, even though I am kind of a nerd about it. Like I love my Sony gear. I love, um, you know, having a bunch of different types of lenses, but that's just cause that's part of my passion. You know, I, yeah. I, I wanted to portray the fact that if, if that's not a part of your, you know, your uh, toolbox, then it doesn't matter because you can pull out your phone and get amazing stuff. Yeah. Well, and that also speaks to the fact that a lot of people are like, oh man, you just came out of nowhere and you have all this camera gear and <laughs> yeah. your vlogs are amazing. And like, uh, if you've ever watched Peter McKinnon or any of those guys on YouTube, everyone always says that. And it's like, well, yeah, but he also was a professional videographer and photographer for like for years years. Yeah. And he didn't just come out of nowhere. It was just that one day he decided, oh, I'm going to start YouTube. Yeah. yeah. All, all of a sudden, I have twenty thousand dollars worth of camera gear in my backpack. This is right. just not a normal <laughs> thing. Like, I I don't have that. You know, I, maybe maybe Brendan does. He's got some pretty insane gear, but it's it it's like a workout putting on his backpack. So <laughs> it is. Yeah, I get that. I mean, but see, that's a, for some people, you really get into it and really enjoy it. Like I'm like Brendan. Like I just want the best of the best. But it's not because I feel like it's necessary. It's just more of, it's, it's, it's being able to refine your craft. You know, I feel like, oh, maybe if I had something that I could get, you know, shoot 60p in 4K or, or if all I'm doing is 1080, if I could shoot 120 or 240 frames per second and get really nice, like slow-mo cinematic shots, um, right. then mm -hmm. it could add another element to the video that's a little more engaging. But, yeah. but in all honesty, like some of my most engaging content is live streams where all I have is my phone set up and yep. uh, I'm able oh, to yeah. just talk and show people what I'm doing. Those are the ones where people like really engage and they're commenting the most. I get the most likes on those. I mean, that I every time I do a live stream, I have Shopify open and orders just start rolling in. Like it's, <laughs> it's awesome. And I'm not saying that to like try and. No, that's cool. I, it's just, it's, I just, I try and like use these things as indicators to understand what people want to see. And it, and it seems like anytime I can just turn a camera on and be honest and open, um, it always does better than if I spend 40 minutes trying to edit a photo for Instagram with the perfect angle and lighting and you know, so right. in the end, you just got to put content up, just keep putting more content up. It doesn't like, don't focus so much on making things perfect, but just like, this is one of the rare occasions. I think that quantity is better than quality. Yeah. Um, I think the more content you can put up and the more engagement you can have with your audience, the better. Absolutely. I always run into that with my YouTube channel because I'm always like, oh, I want to add value. I want to bring yeah. quality to what I'm doing. And it's usually the thing that like stops me because a lot of times I'm like, well, I don't really know exactly what I want to do this week. And then I don't upload. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And you, and yeah. you can't. You can't have that, but I but I think another thing about having gear, good camera gear too, is you don't have to have it. But I find that as a maker, and I'm sure you can attest to this, is as a maker, every time you dabble in something new like that, you get that same bug that you had for the leather 
um, start it up again with something yeah. else. And I, you know, I got that same mm -hmm. bug with, with camera gear and with videos and all that kind of good stuff. And now it's just, just this new thing for my business to where I can put my own spin on it and have my own craft. And the best thing about it is like, I've always said, if I, if I showed up to your shop right now and you told me to make a wallet with your templates and your machines and your everything, yeah. it would end up looking completely different than yours because I'm me and you're you. Exactly. Um, yeah. And if you made a video, it would look completely different than Brendan's video because he's Brendan yeah. and you're you, you know, it's just how, that's just how it works. It, it, it in itself is its own craft. So it's a really cool thing to be able to dabble in all that kind of good stuff too. So, well, and I would definitely say about the maker vloggery movement that like, it's more about the connecting and networking with other makers and people out on YouTube and Instagram or wherever you're posting. For me, that's why I was like drawn to it. And a lot of times like uh, trying to bring that value isn't so much as important as showing people like the realism of who you are as a person. Right. And I think that's something that I personally really need to get into is the fact that I need to show people more about the realism of who I am rather than just trying to put on this facade of bringing value and, oh, I have all this wisdom when really I'm just a mm -hmm. person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He, he's got a lot of stuff too because you see all the stuff behind him is you know that the, these products that are behind us are a lot of other makers products and he told me a long time ago he said one of the biggest things that you can do as a maker um, to build relationships with other people is to support other makers yeah like if I if I'm a leathersmith I mean I'm I can make my own wallet that's that's great but I know nothing about woodwork right now. I know nothing about glass blowing or candles or, yeah. you know, any of that kind of stuff. So if I ever need any of those sorts of things, I'm going to go to another maker and build those relationships. And he's, he's been supporting a ton of, a ton of makers that way. So, yeah, I agree. I, I saw your video on that brand and I thought it was amazing. And, and that, that really, um, that's why the maker vloggery page started getting traction. I think it was because of people like you who like appreciated the, the community over competition, um, aspect of what we're doing. Um, I, I you know, the, in a lot of industries, everything's very hush hush and secretive doing everything behind closed doors because you don't want to give away trade secrets and things like that. And uh, from what I've experienced since the Maker Vloggery um, kind of a ball started getting rolling was that most people love to share their resources. And um, I know that when I was getting started, that was the most important thing. I would message people and out of about 100 messages, I'd get one back of somebody, you know, sharing their resources and helping out. And right. it meant so much when that one person did it. Oh, yeah. And it really like helps you grow leaps and bounds because these are people who have gone through the refiner's fire trying to learn this stuff. And uh, they, you know, they come out on the other end with something that they really, you know, believe in. And so you want to you want to get that input from people. And um, and I, I've always felt very open about that because of that. I want to be that for somebody else if possible. And so the maker vloggery thing was a, a good way to like bring lots of makers together and say, how can we help each other grow um, specifically in the ways of, of, you know, creating good content. Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. one of the biggest things that you have on your channel besides showing how things are made is the fact that like we're trying to do here, it, it, it it's all accessible for any kind of maker for any kind of person that's starting a business it doesn't it's not just about leather craft you can you can give mm -hmm. some sort of advice that would um, help any maker in any type of business thanks everybody for taking the time to tune in today we know your time is valuable so we tried to keep this episode short but if you'd like to watch additional parts of today's interview Head on over to patreon.com slash coffee with creators and join our team today. We want to thank Parker from Stock and Barrel for taking the time to join us today. For more info on him, his company, and his family, head on over to stockandbarrelco.com. Thanks again for tuning in. Remember to subscribe and click the bell to get notified whenever we post a new video. Have a great day.